Hey guys, Romy Supsa here back again. This time we are doing a different kind of video. This time we're talking about more of a analytical mindset as far as how we approach the hero Yorn. Uh, I'll be doing this series for all the heroes going forward, uh, amongst other series where I'll kind of go into depth with how they actually work. Uh, some of which will be like full-fledged guides, others will be like this analytical uh, approach to the video where we kind of just analyze the gameplay and tell you guys what I'm thinking, how I'm building, why I'm building the way I am, and how do I mechanically play Yorn. So, the idea around Yorn is you want to reset your passive. Your passive is, as you can see here in a second, a barrage of arrows. So, every time you do use basic attacks, you get a stack. When you get max stacks, you use your barrage of arrows. Whenever you use an ability, you also reset that passive, getting the barrage of arrows. As you can see right there, I got full stacks after using an ability. Uh, and once again, I got another stack of passive. So, that's usually what you want to do. You want to pump them out as fast as possible. Even if you don't know if you're going to hit it, if you're being attacked, you want to just cast it anyways because you're going to get that reset. It's going to allow you to pump out the damage and potentially take them out. The one thing about Yorn is he has a very serious lack of mobility. He has no mobility, if that, on his entire kit. So you can see here, I'm getting like CC'd, I'm getting poked pretty hard. The only thing I can do is flicker, but even then it didn't save me right here. So that's kind of the downfall of Yorn. He does not have the means to escape unless you have a flicker up and you can properly use it in time. Uh, with the amount of control he can have on top of him, a lot of times he may not even be able to use that flicker to get out of harm's way. But anyways, so, as far as items, I do go into the Finrir's Tooth. Uh, I also go into the, or no, so excuse me, the Fafnir's Talon. I go into Fafnir's Talon for that life, steal, attack, speed, and damage. Uh, and then I go into like things like Rank Breaker, Miramasa, uh, if I'm going into uh, a lot of tanks, because tanks are gonna have a lot of armor since armor is more commonly bought than uh, magic resist the items, because there's more, in general, AD heroes in a composition. So, because of that, you want to go Rank Breaker, which has some pretty nice armor pierce. You want to go into uh, Miramasa, which also has 45% increased armor pierce on top of damage and some cooldown. So, you kind of want to get that because it really works really well against whittling down tanks and such. You could go potentially like Spear of Longinus, but I tend to go Rank Breaker Miramasa just because I like it better. That's just a personal preference. I wouldn't say you'll be bad to go ahead and pick up Spear of Longinus, but that's just... You know, that's just me. But there we go. We have another fight coming up using my abilities. I don't even care if I don't hit. I'm just going to go ahead and snipe and got her. So you can see there, I'm just constantly firing out my abilities so I can have that passive, so I can keep pumping out damage. The range on that barrage is actually pretty far. It holds onto your target for a little while, even when it seems like it's out of range. Um, so that's definitely what you want to do. Another thing about Yorn is, at least I come to find... Most of the time, well, one, you want to use your ultimate as much as possible when you have enemies in, you know, fighting with your allies. Even if you're not even near, just fire an arrow in that direction, see if maybe you can do a little bit of damage and help them out, because the cooldown's very short. But anyways, the, the big thing about Yorn is because he doesn't have mobility, a lot of times I'll find myself simply just saying, I'm not going to try to run, I'm just going to pump out what I can as fast as I can, because there's no point... And trying to run because I'm going to be chased down regardless. A lot of heroes have mobility, like Wukong, Butterfly. A lot of those heroes have the means to just topple on top of me and take me out. And so I want to be able to just pump out the damage while I can. Um, if I'm lucky, I'll be able to uh, burn them down fast enough before they kill me. This one's a little bit scary because we are trying to survive the Butterfly, which we are slowly getting our health back. Oh my goodness, that was pretty scary. Uh, I didn't mean to attack the Abyssal Dragon there, but we definitely want to start that if we get an opportunity. Violet's going into the Butterfly, and I don't know if that's a good idea, but let's go and go back to lane. That's what I'm pretty much thinking here to get my health back. I do have uh, a couple Arcana where I get a bunch of life steal. Um, I'll put it in the um, uh, the beginning of the video real quick. I'll do the items, and I'll also provide you the page for my Arcana. That way, right from the get-go, you guys know exactly what I'm building as far as Arcana and everything else. Oh god, and then we have Butterfly on top of me. Again, no mobility, so I'm just doing the damage I can. That's just as much as I can do. <laughs> I have no flicker. I'm not getting away. I might as well keep fighting. Um, I mean, this match is not a, 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 a landslide by any means. It was actually a pretty good match. I would get killed, and I would do killing. 
Uh, a lot of times it was in my favor and other times it was not. Uh, so it's a good example of things to do and not to do if they come up. Uh, but yeah, so my first item is I generally go again into that Fafnir's Talon. Then I go into, I think, Rank Breaker. Uh, potentially the Beast if I feel like I want more life sustain. Uh, and then again, the uh, Rank Breaker Miramasa. Eventually you want to go into your Finra's Tooth too because you want that damage amp at, I think it's like 40% health. I believe so. Uh, you want to get that... Oh my god, that freaking Alistair was so low. Um, but here we are. We're going to go ahead and try to get the Arthur. Yeah, just can't connect enough damage. He's, he's, he's pretty tanky. So we have Finra's Talon. So we actually have... Oh, excuse me. I keep getting them mixed up. So Finra's Talon is the one that actually gives you attack, speed, life steal, so on and so forth. The Finra's 2... Or Fafnir's Talon. Son of a... <laughs> Uh, clearly, I get it mixed up. Fafnir's Talon is the one that gives you the life steal, attack speed, and damage, plus the percent health uh, on each basic attack. That's the one that I go first. Uh, Finra's Tooth, I go last. Did I get that right the first time? I don't know. But anyways, that's what I do. Um, as far as rotations, uh, a lot of times I tend to push lane as hard as I can. When it's pushing the tower, if I can do damage, I'll do it. Otherwise, I'll fall back and get the seagull, get some vision through that means. Uh, and then... So, I'm having trouble using my ultimate apparently right there. Ooh, this is not good for the violet. Oh, I missed. Damn it. Ooh, that's some pretty good damage on myself. So, one thing to point out in that last situation was... I actually was not doing well with... Uh... Landing my abilities and using my... Oh god, I'm, so, I'm trying out of my mind to escape. Landing my abilities and trying to do the damage I needed to do. I was missing a lot of them, so I was ending up uh, just sitting there doing nothing. The butterfly's gonna come and just sweep the floor with everybody, it looks like. Oh my god. Yes, very nice. I don't remember this match exactly, how it panned out. Uh, but yeah, so... There we go. I do max out my B ability first. I like to have that damage ramp, uh, amp up in the uh, the B because I like to zone quite a bit. Uh, plus, it actually has a shorter cooldown than your A ability. And like, like I said, all I'm looking for are cooldowns for uh, my passives. So the more cooldown I can, or the more abilities I can cast, the better off I am. That's why I go my B uh, or second ability, if you will. Uh, my first ability, I uh, level up second, and then finally my ultimate. Uh, oh no, excuse me, I, I level up my ultimate as much as I can and then my my first ability comes last, excuse me. Uh, but there we go, pushing into lane, just making sure I can go ahead and do the damage. Oh my god, that was a lot of damage on that Violet. So here we are, we're just going to zone in, potentially. Uh, if anybody's there, they'll get hit by that B. Plus it gives me my passive once again. Uh, another thing too is the ultimate does more damage with the more health they actually have lost so you definitely want to try and hit them when they're really low because you're going to be doing a lot of damage with that like no joke it is quite a bit i missed that ultimate right there though oh, i want that kill so bad <laughs> i'm like just sticking around to get that kill oh my goodness i am trying a different method of recording for this particular series uh, I was actually trying to record my gameplay while playing through the actual recording feature in game to see how the quality was. It seems like it's starting to have a bit of frame drops here and there, but uh, overall it's not too bad. Uh, I think it's time to bounce, dude. This is looking pretty bad. Uh, we got ourselves in a bad situation. Okay, where am I going? You need to run outwards, not towards a wall. Alright, there we go. Nice. I think we will survive. Yeah, I'm just firing arrows. I don't care. I, I I have a short cooldown, so I'll keep firing him. Oh, nice. He chunks. Yorn chunks. If you can get on top of somebody before they even can stun you or you know, CC you at all, crowd control you, like slows or knockups, whatever it may be, uh, you're going to do a lot of damage, especially when you pick up that Clave Sancti. Oh, I'm dead. I'm so dead, but I'm going to kill nobody. Yeah, I kind of did not move. 
I didn't reposition myself. I would definitely say you want to reposition yourself uh, in proper means. That team fight, like they were just staring me down while I was still trying to hit people. But yeah, like definitely let me know what you guys want to see for this series. If there's something I didn't do that you're like, hey, you should probably do this while you're doing the video. Uh, like maybe putting in edits where it shows up different information. Like if I'm covering something, I can put like an image of whatever I'm talking about. Uh, in general, like what I used to do is just literally show the gameplay, talk about it, and then uh, that's it. You know, and hopefully you guys will learn a little bit about the hero I'm playing. Um, but yeah. So again, just using abilities, get that passive. Use another ability, get that passive. Uh, in between, you would use your basic attacks to get your passive once again. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what you do. The, the bulk of the build, too, like as far as damage, is the Finrer's Tooth and the Clave Sancti, along with, um, you know, the rest of the damage amp up with that the Finrer's Tooth. But Clave Sancti and Finrer's Tooth are definitely the most optimal. Oh my god, and I survived somehow! Well, maybe not for much longer, damn it. I thought I was going to be like a god there. <laughs> I'm 8 and 5 though, it's not too bad. I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised. So there's Miramasa. So it gives you that damage, cooldown, and armor pierce. So I'm going to be chunking tanks now. Like not, you know, it's like as if they have no armor. But I'm definitely going to be able to do some decent damage against them. Um, I don't know what Butterfly's doing. She's zoning the lane when there's nothing pushing, which is pointless. And she's getting herself in a bad position. But anyways, she's still going for farm. Ah, oh, he missed. Well, here we are. We're going to go ahead and fire an arrow. And there it goes. We did our damage, at least. And she's actually doing really good at getting away, too. There we go. Let me handle this business for you guys, because apparently you can't do it. <laughs> All right, now we have to go to back to our middle lane. Uh, rotations are pretty important too. You want to constantly try to oh, the ultimate right in his face. You want to constantly try to uh, rotate to your lanes. Make sure you clear those minions so your turrets don't go down. You do you do not want them to go down. That's a lot of damage from that ultimate right there. Um, yeah, because like with with the damage. Or the the uh, defense of the towers outside of having an enemy hero on them, they're pretty weak. Uh, I mean, obviously when you have your minions on top of it, they're even weaker. But oh my god, that's not good. See, that's one thing I did right there. Um, I stayed far too long. I was just trying to poke the tower, thinking I'd be able to do enough damage to take it out. I shouldn't have done that, and that was my fault. And we just gave Butterfly a bunch of kills. Triple kill. Uh, so yeah, that was not smart of me. I definitely advise not overextending for too long. You get your objective done, whether it's taking out the team and then pushing towers. And then when you start to see their, them coming up off cooldown, you definitely want to dip out. You're not going to be good to solo with because you need somebody to control your enemies. So that way you can kind of backline and do your damage. If you're the only guy there and you have two, I would say at least two people on you, you're going to die. There's no question. You're just going to die. Um, unless you have some godlike flicker skills here. Alright, going to mid lane though to protect that. I don't want it to drop. Uh, bot lane has to be protected. It looks like Mina's going down there. Uh, boots. So boots, I kind of, like, I rotate what I want to build. If I start to see, like, for instance, if they had a Natalia that was doing really, really well, and it was annoying the heck out of me, I would probably pick up, you know, the gilded boots. Have a bit more magic resist. Uh, and so on and so forth, but then um, if I'm going against like a heavy hitting ADC like Violet and she's giving me issues then I'd probably do uh, the Sonic Boots instead. Get that extra armor uh, and hope, hope that I don't, don't get burst down by 80 damage like that. Holy crap. I did more. Oh, no, I didn't. We did the same. Go, go, go! Dude, I chunk, but you know, I definitely get chunked, that's for sure. 
Ah, uh, the fail arrow into Grack instead of Alistair. That was sad, but I do, we do take him out though. I do have an arrow coming up. Uh, but it's too late because I have to deal with this butterfly. Aww. <laughs> uh, Lubu takes out the Alistair. He's probably going to die to this butterfly. Oh, wait. Maybe not. Nice. Lupus ultimate's pretty nice too. It gives him some pretty hefty lifesteal. Uh, all right, so our build so far, it looks like it was Clave Sancti, Rank Breaker, Mermasa, uh, Fafner's Talon, and then Sonic Boots. Uh, at this point, I'm probably gonna go ahead and pick up Hercule Hercules Madness. So if I go any kind of defensive item, any defensive item for an AD carry, I go at Hercules Madness. The reason being is because it gives you nice defenses for not just magic, but also AD. So AP and AP, AD and AP defense, because you both of that. Plus it gives you damage by default. Then it gives you a barrier by default when you get hit 40% health. And it also increases your damage furthermore when it goes into that barrier mode. So it's a really good item. It's not gonna save you from things like constant bursts from like Wukong, but saving you from that one or two hits that you would have died at might be the time needed for a teammate to get there to CC the Wukong off you or give you time to just burn that hero down that's burning into you. Uh, it, it's, it's just one of those things where like it could definitely save your life. Uh, this one is looking bad, but whew, uh, we got some good spells onto her. The, I think the Ta Natalia's uh, spell just hit her right in the face and stunned her indefinitely. That was nice. That was her report. So there we go. Another thing too about Yorn is he actually can outrange a tower. So a lot of times if you have no minions, you could still potentially pick at the uh, the uh, the tower without being hit. I'm definitely trying to get my life back here. We, we already won for the most part. There we go. But all right, so there is the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this analytical video series. Again, I'll be doing more in the future. Uh, but if you, do, if you do like the series, definitely leave a like, subscribe, let me know what you want to see in the future, and I will see you guys uh, next time. <laughs> Later!